How do you bid as a middleman on Unison? So this is Unison, and I'll provide background on this in a second. So we're gonna go through this. Unison Marketplace and Unison in and of itself, they are a, um, a government contractor. They have an extreme benefit by having all of us bid on their website. So Unison, and I'm gonna put the link right here, this organization, you can go under contract vehicles and you can see that they have a GSA schedule. They are an active government contractor. They have a, an interest for all of us to use their website because it allows the um, federal government to save so much money and to acquire what they're looking to acquire very quickly. In order to be able to access Unison, you have to be able to log in and you need a cage code and a UEI to log in. If you don't have these, then you're not gonna be able to log in. The other thing, and let's see if anybody, what has happened is because the federal government knows, hey, wait a minute, you mean I can post something here and save potentially a ton of taxpayer dollars, and you can see there's a whole slew of opportunities. Look, there's 588. You win one. I mean, you probably have better odds at winning a government contract than the lotto. Okay, let's type in beanies. Okay, I'm really glad that you brought this up because I'm gonna walk you through how to respond. So you'll notice it's a different kind of platform, right? And they like to tout themselves as being the platform of the unusual. So you'll find things in here from beanies all the way to weapons, to food, to books, to staffing. It's a whole smorgasbord. For this one, they want these different beanies and they broke down the requirement. Here's the style guide, here's the stitch, 25,000, 10,000, 20,000. Now you may say, I don't, what, beanies? Where am I supposed to get this? A printing company. There's several of them. You've probably even seen a commercial for one. So let's say you were interested in this and you're like, listen, I'm going to do this. I'm all about this. I want to bid on this. So I'm going to, and I'm going to break down the step that I would take if I were to bid on this. So first and foremost, I get an idea. How much time do I have? Okay. I got almost 15 days. I'm going to have to contact a company who's able to handle this. And also I want to know what are the evaluation criteria? How are they going to decide? So here you notice, and if you see it, the basis of award, and it says commercial items, the following factor shall be used to evaluate offers technically acceptable of the item offered to meet the government requirement and price. Evaluation is based on a lowest price technically acceptable. So in other words, they're saying, hey, as long as you're able to provide these beanies, you just have to provide the lowest cost. So it's kind of a gamble if you don't know this industry, because this will often happen. So if I were to bid on this, I would go to the internet. Many others have shared this on online before, like you go online, you Google and you find some vendors and they're the experts and you take their price and then you put it on there. Well, what's going to happen is these experts that you contact, they're giving you almost like a retail price. So the price that they're giving you is a bit higher. They're not giving you the price at cost. And the other bonus strategy is how do you know that that company isn't a government contractor? So it's really important to go on sam.gov and look to see if that company is a government contractor or to ask them, hey, I'm just curious, are you guys going to bid on this too? Because how are you able to compete against the company who is actually providing the beanies, the source. They're the source. So if I were to bid on this, I would identify the organizations. I would make sure they weren't bidding on this. They weren't registered in SAM. I'd verify that they were able to provide the requirement because it's very specific. I mean, this is for the army. I don't, I wanna make sure that, and then I would probably lower the price that the vendor gave because this is lowest cost technically acceptable. And the thing is for something like this in Unison, they have these different, different information in here. They have the shipping instructions. Just give me a moment, I'll share this with you. These are instructions you definitely want to make sure you pay attention to. It says between 7.30 and 11. 
one and three. So make sure you handle that. You don't want something delivered at noon. Next, you're going to want to open the other attachment, which is about new specifications. I'll show you all that one too. Because I want you to see that while the concept is, is pretty easy to dissect and digest, right? Like Army needs these beanies. I find somebody to provide the beanies and then I make sure it's delivered. But I also want you to see where there's room for error, right? You have to have it shipped at a certain time. You have to write, make sure the right color, the right logo, like everything is correct. You don't want to purchase some beanies and then they misspell army. And then also they need pre-production samples, pre-award samples. So this may be something where you're like, man, I, I really don't want to be involved. This is something I would consider, this is like medium risk. They're very specific. So I want you to see, right? You see the beanie right there? Okay, great. You can see they. this is what they desire. So they're super specific because there's a particular color scheme, no different than Coca-Cola or Pepsi. The Army is a brand They are, and they actually license out their logo too. The Marines does it also. For something like this, because it's lowest cost and there's a lot of companies out there who sell things like beanies. I mean, there's companies that, you know, they brand phones, they brand pin. So any kind of clothing branding company would be interested in this. You may only make a two or 3% profit. This is also something to be aware of because many out there who talk about the middleman may not share sometimes the profit because you put in all this work to find these vendors, to put in all these bids, but they're the source. So the person who ha is the source, they have all the power. And then on top of it, they, even with the Buy American Act, maybe for these type of beanies, in order for the army to get them in the time that they want them, maybe the supplier's like, hey, it's gonna take two months to get them in the state. But if you go through Asia, it may only take one month. And so then you have to deal with that. You have to check to make sure there aren't any holidays, there aren't any issues, there's not something that could prolong you getting these. So that's another drawback from this if you decide to go this route. I'm gonna share my screen so you can see that is Unison proper. So Unison Marketplace, the link is in the, is right there in the chat. Here on Unison, you receive a username and password. And while it's the fourth quarter, it may be one of the reasons that they're posting so many. Let's see here. Let's take a look at some of, let's see, you have here some IT. I'm gonna take a look at one of my favorites. I like professional services. So I'm gonna go to education and social services. So let's take a look at this core competency training. So let's look at a services one. This one is to provide training the 11th through the 15th of September. You can see it's a small business set aside. So pretty much most people would qualify for that and only small businesses can bid. Then what we're looking for is basis of award, evaluation, some derivative of, of that because it's key to know how are they evaluating this. It explicitly said lowest cost and it's lowest price. Because again, one of the benefits of this platform is it's saving the government money and it's training. This is really low risk. Without even opening any of the attachments, I already know that this is probably training that you can find somebody on LinkedIn, on Google, to provide these services. Then I proceed to open the attachments, which I am doing here and I will share this with you. So the training must be done in person. They're providing information on the objectives and this is for special forces. So already in my head, I'm thinking, okay, this has to be somebody probably who was served in that position and okay, they have to be able to maintain a secret clearance and have two of the following. One thing is when it comes to this, and that's why you haven't even seen me open up any kind of other attachments. So I look at this and I'm like, okay, let me take a look. And then it says it requires a secret clearance. Okay, well, guess what? At, what that means is your company has to have a secret clearance. So that's a no-go. 
I can't bid on this. This isn't something to bid on whatsoever. I don't have a, a clearance. It's not something to bid on. What you're also going to find as you're going through this, you're going to go through a lot of opportunity. I could have easily brought up several opportunities to quickly walk you through because before going live, I would have looked them up online, but this is how it works. It's you fishing to find, it may be that you look at 200, but think about it. That 200 can lead to a million dollar contract or a $5 million contract, like with Brandon Hendricks, who I interviewed on my channel. You know, I'll go over just a couple of janitorial ones, just so you can see. And the only reason I'm going over these is I know a lot of people ask me about them and that's why I'm doing it. This one in particular is very intense and it involves cleaning horse stables and holding cells. And it's not something that I, I suggest um, that you bid on unless you really are experienced. So let's take a look at this. Going to look at is what is the basis of the award. So we scroll and we're looking on the far left because even though Unison is more user friendly, you never know where they tuck it in. So they're again saying lowest price technically acceptable, but this is for five years. So it's a base plus or even if on the worst end, you're making $300 a month, you're making $300 a month for five years on an opportunity that you're not even doing the work. I just want to put this out there because especially for this whole, the middleman and how it's pit volume may be needed. So now let's take a look at what do they need? Cause it says landscape. So this right here is called a statement of work. And what you're looking for is the place of performance. And you can already see how drastically different this is in comparison to the beanie, right? The beanies are very, very specific. You have to give them a pre-quote sample, a pre-award sample, right? It's very, very different. With this, it's a whopping three pages at um, Coast Guard Station Channel Island in Oxnard, California. They want landscaping, okay? So a person needs a valid driver's license. So they're letting you know, here's the point of contact, here's the scope of work. So you see, okay. Here's what you have to do. They're not going to set up the tools for you, right? They have to do all of that. You would have to do all of that. And then you see it's five years. This is the base and these are the option years. But before rushing, okay, let me go online like the cat, you know, let me find somebody to do this. Like you're all tweaking, understand what, you're, what we're getting into. They don't have to exercise the option. That's why they call it exercising. It's no different than the gym. How many people have a gym membership and you ain't never been, you don't have to exercise. So when you get an award that has multiple years, like a five-year contract, this is a five-year contract. And this is what you want because it would bring ongoing revenue. You have to make sure you're always exceeding expectations because if not, they're going to be like, did y'all see the, the land, landscapers? What are they doing over there? Whose contract is that? You don't want that. You want them to be like, who's that over there? Man, this, this has never looked so good here. And I've been stationed here for seven years. You know, that's what you want. Okay. So this one's pretty easy. So here's what you do. Here are the steps. So however you like to take notes, get ready. First step. And that is to identify landscape companies or people. It could be Tom's landscaping. I hired somebody very similar to that to take care of my investment property. And he's amazing. I am blown away by this man. So what's important is in the attachment, you only want to give them, Hey, here are the requirements. You cut and paste them. And by the way, here's what the expectations are. So it's section 11 and section six from the word doc. You call them, you email them. Hey, I'm in the middle of bidding on this opportunity. And I would love to get a price quote of your services to do the following two things, because we haven't even opened the pricing part yet. Before you even call any of these companies, check on sam.gov login into your workspace to make sure that they are not a registered government contractor. Or if you still want to call them, although they registered, ask them, you know, I noticed that you're in Sam. Are you going to bid on this too? That's a, a tip to do. So something that you're going to want to do, and let me share this screen with you all. And that is you're going to want to ask a question and you also want to click this box to see if anybody asks a question. So I would ask a question of, what is the frequency that they want the landscaping services? Because I just know it's for five years. And again, it could be that I'm sleepy and it's in here somewhere. 
I know it has a quantity of 49. So is that mean it's weekly? I'm assuming, I don't know, but here's the deal. There's no reason to assume. You can not only submit the question, but you see right here, how many websites nowadays list their phone number there? So let's say you get the bid and we find out it's weekly and they're like, hey, weekly lawn service is going to run based on what you said, it's gonna be $200. Listen, I don't know, I just have my house worked on and I have a property manager, so I don't know what the going rate is for lawn service. Um, let's say for the sake of argument, it's 500. So they're like, hey, it's gonna be a thousand a month because we gotta find the people to do it. It's California, all of these things, okay? Millennial prayers, I appreciate you. Let's say that's the case. So then what you would do, so again, before we even get to anything, right? Because we don't need to go rush into a proposal. Understanding, knowing the evaluation criteria, getting a quote. Normally when it's a subcontractor and it's a service like this, you can do a net 30 or you can get away with more time. So let's say you're like, it's a thousand a week, 49 weeks, 49,000. Let's say you're like bare bone basic. It's $49,000 just to pay the lawn service people. I like a profit of 20%. So we're at 58,800. Keeping in mind, lowest price technically acceptable. So this is where you have to ponder. You have to ponder, is that really going to be a winning price? Is the government really going to pay that amount of money for weekly lawn service? You already know the answer is hell no. So then it's like, okay, what can you do to decrease it? Because right now you would make a profit of 900 a month, hypothetically. Maybe you decrease your profit so you're making $500 a month. $500 a month, 12 months, $6,000, and you're not even doing anything. You submit an invoice every month. That's gonna take you 20 minutes. It could be that what you do is you start off high because, let me show you the next uh, steps. So you go to start bid. I'm just gonna type in this stuff here. Accept all the terms. Okay, it says required to include certain information as documented, attached their bid. I didn't see any specific information that they were looking for. So this is an opportunity to potentially ask another question. Anytime you need a clarifying question, post it on Unison under Q&A and feel free to call Unison. You definitely want to get, get clarification because based on what I showed you all, what, are, what do they want from me? <laughs> like, what, what do they need? So let's say it turns out they're like, no, we don't really need anything. So you put in your bid. And then maybe you're like, okay, let's auto stop at 50. Continue. Oh, I have wait. Look, I went crazy. So it it went nuts. So let's go back. Oh, it's I know what I did, you guys. It's I'm so tired. I can't even think of my math. It's per it's by 49. <laughs> let's say you want 1500. It's a week. Say you wanted 15 then the auto stop and you do it at 12. Oh my gosh. Thank you all for being flexible with me. Like my ability to do math is kind of out of it. So you see, there's also a unison fee that I, I don't think you can move the guide me. There we go. But if you really want to know how somebody who has made well over $3 million in one year doing the middleman approach, get that video. It's a whopping $49. You won't regret it. And I know probably many of you already have it. Or if you're watching the replay, if you made it this far, check out this video. It's amazing because the key is to understand, to know the set aside, and to create your own ocean. While you can see in this demonstration, it's really super easy to use Unison, right? There's nothing here where you're like, man, this is hard. The challenge comes in with doing all of the work, putting in the bid, calling the landscaping, making sure the landscaping's doing what they need to do. And you can substitute landscaping for save a back training. This is real training that the government purchased. You can substitute it with art. You can substitute it with redoing a floor. What's key is you learn so you are empowered. So you're not just going into this space of being a government contractor without having key information. You want all this information.
You have a lot of people where they just don't bid. There's hundreds, I think hundreds of thousands of companies registered in SAM.gov and a very, very, very small percentage actually even bid. So for those of you who are bidding, I commend you because you are bidding amongst a very few number of people. So I want to say just keep going forward, keep learning. Okay. If there's so much competition, competition out there, with this, with those small businesses, how does one have a chance? You have a chance. Number one, your mindset. The world is full of abundance. The world is full of money. There's so much money. There's so many opportunities. That's number one. Number two, what is meant for me is going to happen. Number three, most people don't bid. They just don't. So, I mean, they don't. Even if you're like, well, I understand. Why wouldn't a lawn service company do that? Because they're busy taking care of their other clients. They don't want to spend the time. Oh, there's so much red tape. It's so hard. I don't want to do it. I personally don't know anyone who's like, man, Kizzy, I'm worth a hundred million dollars. And it was so easy, girl. I did, oh, and I get all this money. I, I mean, I don't know people like that. I've never in my life, and I've come across a lot of people. I've come across billionaires. I've come across people who aren't billionaires. I've come across people who have made money, lost money. I've come across all different kinds of people in my life. And I'll say this, it's never because of just some magical thing. Um, it's never because of just, it's super, super easy. Now, do I think that this is super, super hard? Heck no. I think it's very easy to win a contract. The challenge is making sure you have a profitable business and you understand what it takes to continuously find bid and win contracts. So you have a business, not I want a contract. Okay. And then what happens? I'll, I'll kind of close with this. There's, you know, Alex Hermosi. I adore him. I love watching his content. He's such a savvy business owner. And so, he talked about business, the beginning and the end. He's like, at the beginning, you're super excited. You're just starting. At the end, you're super excited because maybe you sell, you transition out, whatever it is you do. He said, the, it's like the suck is in the middle, but that's where all the, like, the real work happens. So it's about embracing that middle. And I embraced that middle for well over 10 years. And that's why I'm here because I don't want you to have to go through what I went through over the span of 10 years. I'm here to teach you everything I know, to show you everything I know, but also to learn too and let you know, I don't know every single thing. I'm never gonna know every single thing. I didn't know that the army needed almost 100,000 beanies. I mean, thank you all so, so much for being here. Uh, join my Facebook group if you haven't already. It's not to look back and, oh, and I don't look back, I look forward. And I got way more work to put in, y'all. This is only the beginning. Take care, like, subscribe, hit the notification button.